to be here with uh, Dr. Barnabas uh, for this very important world missions uh, emphasis tonight. Na nimepewa heshima kubwa sana kuwa pamoja na ninyi jioni leo na ndugu yangu Dr. Barnabas mtoka mbali kuwepo katika mkazo huu wa umisheni jioni leo. For the last 10 uh, we, years our church has been heavily involved in helping with operations here and renovations we're grateful for that privilege uh, katika miaka 10 iliyopita kanisa langu limekuwa likijihusisha na shughuli mbalimbali za uh, maeneo mbalimbali za kimaendeleo na tunashukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya neema hiyo aliyotupa and i uh, admire and appreciate so much uh, reverend uh, sam johnson's uh, influence in tanzania and and so many of us that are his friends, thank you, Sam, for all you have done and are doing. May the Lord bless you in mighty, mighty ways. Na ninabalikiwa sana na kushawishika na kazi kubwa anaifanya ndugu yetu Sam Johnson ya kugusa maeneo mbalimbali ya watumishi mbalimbali. Mungu akubariki sana Sam Johnson. How many of you have a goal in life for God to use you? Wangapi wenu huko ndani mmewahi kuwa na lengo katika maisha yenu kwamba Mungu akutumie. You lift your hand and say I want God to use me. Inua mkono wako juu na kusema nataka Mungu unitumie mimi. Jesus use us for the expansion of your kingdom. Yesu tutumie sisi kwa utanuzi wa ufalme wako. Speak to us in this meeting about what your specific plans are for each of us. Sema na sisi katika mkutano huu kwa habari ya malengo yako mahususi kabisa unayohitaji kwa kila mmoja wetu. To reach the unreached kuafikia watu ambao hawajafikiwa na kupanda makanisa mapya na kuwajenga viongozi wa kitaifa ambao watauvuta ulimwengu wote kwa utukufu wako amen amen i have been given a text for this meeting Na andiko kwa jili ya mkutano au kusanyiko letu hili it's found in Acts chapter 3 na tunalipata katika kitabu cha matendo sura ile ya tatu in the 19th verse na mstali ni ule wa 19 let's, let's read 19 and 20 please naomba tusome mstali wa 19 na wa 20 tubuni basi Sorry. Tubuni basi mreje ili dhambi zenu zifutwe zipate kuja nyakati za kuburudishwa kwa kuwako kwake Bwana apate kumtuma Kristo Yesu mlie wekewa tangu zamani God has promised he would send seasons of refreshing Mungu anaahidi ya kwamba atatuma nyakati za kuburudishwa. The context of how he called this forth comes from a mighty miracle. Unajua mkutadha au mazingira ya jambo hili linatokea baada ya muujiza mkubwa. Peter and John on the way into the temple see the lame man and they touch him with the power of Jesus. Wakati Petro na Yohana wakienda katika hekalu wakakutana na mtu ambaye uh, nikiwete wakamuinua kwa nguvu and now peter is calling everyone to turn to jesus and honor him na baada ya hapo petro anawataka watu wote wamgeukie yesu na kumheshimu yeye that's really what we're doing here that's what we're doing here focusing hicho, on jesus na hicho ndicho ambacho tunakifanya sisi sote hapa if you study Peter's messages throughout the New Testament, unajua ukisoma nyaraka zote za Petro katika kitabu chote cha Agano Jipya. He always has the same theme. Mara zote utamuona anazungumza jambo lile lile. Jesus is Lord and he died for us. Anasema mara nyingi Yesu ni Bwana na amekufa kwa ajili yetu. And now he lives forevermore. Na sasa anaishi milele. I said our leader lives tonight. Our leader lives. Na nasema ya kwamba kiongozi wetu anaishi hata sasa. And the student of the word knows that time is short. 
na unapokuwa mwanafunzi wa neno la Mungu utafahamu ya kwamba muda ni mchache Jesus return is at hand Unyakati za Yesu kurudi zimekaribia In a few moments you're going to be given opportunity to respond Na katika muda mfupi utapewa sasa nafasi ya kuitikia Paul tells the young evangelist Timothy in the last days perilous times will come. Na 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 Paulo anamwambia mtumishi um, wa Mungu huyu mhubili kijana Timothy ya kwamba siku za mwisho zitakuwa nyakati za hatari. All over the world people are suffering. There is shortage. Na katika maeneo yote ya ulimwengu watu wanapitia mambo magumu. Supplies are running out. Na mambo ya kupatikanaji wa mahitaji umekuwa hafifu. People want hope. Watu wanatafuta tumaini. And government is never the answer. Na 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 na, na bado serikali zao hazina majibu. The church of Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. Kanisa la Yesu Kristo ndilo tumaini la ulimwengu. Amen. Amen. When I think of the the situation with Saul of Tarsus how God knocked him off his horse. Saul of Tarsus got knocked off his horse. Ninapo fikilia swala la mtumishi wa Mungu Sauli. He was killing Christians and coming against the kingdom of God. Kabla hajawa Paulo hapo mwanzo alikuwa akiwaua sana wa Kristo na kuyalibu kazi ya Mungu. Jesus knocked him off his horse. Na Yesu Kristo akakutana naye akiwa safalini That's in Acts chapter 9. Na ukisoma hiyo utaikuta katika ile sura ya matendo sura ya tisa Jesus asked him a personal question while he's laying on the ground. Na Yesu anamuuliza maswali ya binafsi kabisa akiwa amelala pale chini. So why are you persecuting me? Anamuuliza Sauli, kwa nini uniudhi? Kwa nini unanitesa? And then he says it's impossible for you to succeed against the church. Na Mungu Yesu anamwambia sio rahisi ukafanikiwa kinyume cha kanisa. And then Saul asked Jesus two important questions. Na tunaona baada ya hapo Sauli anamuuliza Yesu maswali mawili ya muhimu. I propose that they may be the two most important questions of your life and of every person in the world. Inawezekana maswali haya yakawa ni ya muhimu sana kwa wewe mwenyewe na kila mmoja wetu hapa duniani. He asked Jesus, "Who are you, Lord?" Moja, Sauli akamuuliza, "Wewe ni nani, Bwana?" The world needs to meet Jesus. Unajua ulimwengu unahitaji kukutana na Yesu. And the second question he asked, na swali la pili ambalo aliuliza, "What do you want me to do?" Unataka mimi nifanye nini? And the call of the Holy Spirit tonight is, "What can I want you and inspire you to do? What does he want us to do? Na wito wa Roho Mtakatifu jiona leo anatuita na kutaka sisi tujue yeye anataka sisi tufanye nini. We have an interven- intervention with the Holy Spirit tonight to listen to his voice. Sisi tunapaswa jiona leo tukutane na Roho Mtakatifu na tuisikie sauti yake. Do you know what he wants to do with you? Hivi unafahamu Roho Mtakatifu anataka afanye nini na wewe? We can find the answer in three important uh, questions. Tunaweza tukapata majibu katika maswali matatu haya ya muhimu. First of all, we must know the mission that God has assigned us. Jambo la kwanza lazima tuelewe kazi au mpango au shughuli ambayo Mungu ametupa sisi tufanye. You can't succeed in ministry unless you know exactly what the Lord wants you to do. Uwezi kufanikiwa katika huduma mpaka hasa ufahamu Mungu anataka wewe ufanye nini. My Bible said he's not willing for anyone to perish. Biblia inasema Mungu hafurahii mtu yoyote apotee. In Matthew 28 Ukisoma hata katika kila kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya 28. In verse 18 Jesus says all authority in heaven and earth is in me. Mstari wa 18 anasema mamlaka yote ya mbinguni na duniani ininayo mimi. So then he says go and make disciples of all nations. Na baada ya hapo anasema nendeni mkawafanye mataifa yote kuwa wanafunzi wangu. He has called every one of us to go. Ametuita sisi sote hapa tuwe na nafasi ya kwenda It's the mission that he has assigned. Na huo hiyo ndio kazi ambayo yeye ametupa sisi. 
We must know then the enablement that God would supply. Lakini lazima tuelewe ya kwamba bado kuna uwezo ambao tutapewa kwa ajili ya kazi hiyo. We heard the stories about all the churches being planted. Tumesikia habari ya makanisa yote ambayo yamepandwa. And it takes money to do that. Na inahitaji fedha ili kupanda makanisa hayo. You recall Moses when God gave him his assignment. Unajua unakumbuka hata wakati Musa ambapo alipewa ile kazi na Mungu. He was called to bring several million people out of bondage. Alikuwa ameitwa kuwatoa watu milioni saba katika utumwa. Moses says I don't know how to do that. Na Musa anamwambia Mungu sijui namna ya kufanya. And God says my presence is going to go with you. Lakini Mungu akamwambia uwepo wangu utakwenda na wewe. We need his power flowing in our lives and in our ministries. Tunahitaji nguvu zake zitililike katika maisha yetu na kwenye huduma zetu. Recently uh, I was in a, another Muslim country. Uh, muda mfupi tu nilikuwa nimetembelea nchi fulani ya Kiislamu. And I was witnessing to a Muslim man na nilikuwa nikiwashuhudia habari ya Kristo wa Islamu wawili. I said you've come to a fork in the road. Uh, a turning point in the road. Na nikawa namwambia yule wale watu kwamba imefika wakati sasa mnatakiwa mge, mfanye mbadili, mgeuke. Should you go this way or this way? Na nyinyi ndio lazima mfanye maamuzi either mnaenda njia hii au mnaenda njia ile. But there's two people here in front of you. Lakini kuna watu wawili hapa mbele. One of them is dead. Moja wao ambao mnatakiwa kuwafuata amekufa. His name is Muhammad. Anaitwa Muhammad jina lake. But there's another one standing there that says follow me. Lakini kuna mwingine hapa mbele yenu amesimama anasema nifuate mimi. He he knows the road we're to take. Anajua njia ya ambayo unapaswa kuipitia. So I said to the Muslim man, do you want a dead guide or a living guide? Oh nikawa nikawauliza wale wa Islam, je, kati ya watu wawili mnataka mtu aliyekufa au mnataka huyu ambaye yupo hai sasa? That's easy and I just want to tell you this living guide is still working tonight. Nataka nikwambie ya kwamba huyu Mungu wetu aliye hai anafanya kazi hata jioni ya leo. Invite him to fill your heart with enthusiasm for the work. Mwalike au jaze moyo wako kwa shauku ya kazi. He said in Matthew 28:20 I will be with you to the end of the age. Amesema katika Mathayo ile 28:28 28:28 nitakuwa pamoja na wewe hata mkamilifu wa dahali. And then we need to know and understand the commitment that God requires of us. Lakini ni vizuri tuelewe namna ambavyo sisi Mungu anatutaka tujitoe maisha yetu. One of the most inspiring experiences of my life has been in the city of Rome visiting the Mamertin prison katika jambo ambalo limekuwa likinigusa sana ni ile swala mimi nilifika katika ule mji wa Kirumi nikawa naangalia zile kumbukumbu za maaskari so where the apostle paul and others were incarcerated just before their extermination ni mahali ambapo paulo na wenzake ambao ambapo walikuwa wametendewa mambo mabaya kabla ya mauti yao Unless somebody comes to feed you you're going to die in that place. Na kwa kweli mazingira ya pale kama kusingetokea mtu akukulisha ulikuwa unakufa. It was in that very place there that the apostle Paul said rejoice in the Lord always. Na ilikuwa ni katika eneo hilo gumu sana ambalo Paulo aliandika walaka akisema furaini katika Bwana siku zote. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Kwa sababu mimi kuishi ni Kristo na kufa ni faida. He said something in that in his letter to the Philippi that's important for us. Alisema Paulo kitu cha muhimu sana katika walaka wake kwa Wafilipi ambacho ni cha muhimu sana kwetu siku ya leo. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Ukiangalia kile kitabu cha Wafilipi ile sura ya tatu na mstari wa 13 hadi ule mstari wa 14. He said this, this one thing I do Anasema hili ndilo jambo moja ninafanya. May I repeat that this one thing I do. Hivi unaweza ukarudia jambo hili ngoja nilirudie. Anasema hili ndilo jambo moja nalifanya. Forgetting those things that are behind me. Kuyasahau yale yote yaliyokuisha kupita. And I'm reaching forth to those that are in front of me. Lakini nayatazamia sana yale yaliyo mbele yangu. I want to win the prize. Anataka nishinde for the high calling of God that's in Christ. 
msaada na nasema na kaza mwendo nifikie mede ya thawabu ya wito mkuu wa Mungu katika Kristo Yesu How can you be committed when people do bad things to you Wewe unafanya nini watu wanapofanya mambo mabaya kwako How can you be committed when people in your ministry uh, betray you Inatokea una, ina, ina kueje, inapotokea watu katika huduma yako wanakusaliti You can get discouraged easily Unajua mazingira hayo yanaweza kukufanya uvunjike moyo kirahisi sana. So Paul said this one thing I'm doing. Lakini katika mambo hayo yote Paulo anasema mimi nina jambo moja nalifanya. I'm forgetting about what people have done to me. Ninasahau yote ambayo watu wamefanya juu ya maisha yangu. And I'm pressing on for Jesus. Lakini mimi nakaza mbele kwa ajili ya Kristo Yesu. Forgetting that word forgetting means no longer being influenced. Unajua kusahau maana yake ni kwamba ni ile hali ya kutokuvutwa tena na mambo hayo. Paul is never going to forget the people that are beating him with rods or stoning him. Sio ni kweli kwamba Paulo sio kwamba atasahau kabisa juu ya wale watu ambao wamewahi kumtesa na kumpiga. But I got my eyes on bigger things than what they're doing to me. Lakini nimeyatoa macho yangu kwa mateso hayo na watu waliotendea hayo nimeyawekeza kwa yale mambo makubwa ambayo Mungu anafanya kwa. The Lord of the harvest calls us to keep our eyes on him. Bwana wa mavuno anatuita sisi tuwekeze macho yetu kwake. In the next few moments I want to talk to you about something very important. Katika dakika chache natamani niseme na wewe juu ya jambo la muhimu sana. Who is that person that God is going to use in this hour? Je, ni nani mtu huyo ambaye Mungu anataka amtumie katika wakati huu? The person God will use first of all is the person who has a real purpose for mtu, life. Mtu ambaye Mungu anataka kumtumia ni yule ambaye anakusudi halisi katika maisha. We can't have divided heart and and succeed in this work. Hatuwezi tukawa na mioyo iliyogawanyika na tukafanikiwa katika kazi yake. Every interest has got to be in second place compared to the lordship of Jesus. Every priority must Kila, kila vipao mbele vyetu vyote lazima tuviache lakini tuchukue kile ambacho ni cha muhimu kwa ajili ya Bwana wetu Yesu. The need is urgent tonight. Nataka niwaambieni uhitaji ni wa uharaka sana jioni leo. By way of illustration, let me just think about three places. Em nataka tu nikupe vielelezo hapa. Em waza juu ya maeneo makuu matatu. In Afghanistan tonight there's 40 million people that live there. Angalia katika ile nchi ya Afghanistan kuna watu zaidi ya milioni 40 wanaishi pale. There are 48,000 mosques in that country. Na kuna 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 misikiti 48,000 katika nchi ile. How many churches are there in Afghanistan that have a life-giving message for people in that nation? Je, ni makanisa mangapi aliyo hai yapo kwenye nchi hii na yanaleta ujumbe uliyo hai wa Kristo Yesu? Not one. Hakuna hata moja. The United States spent 877 billion dollars to help support Afghanistan. Unajua nchi ya Amerika inatoa zaidi ya mamilioni ya dola kwa kuisaidia hii nchi ya Afghanistan. 2300 soldiers died and over 20000 are wounded. Unasikia wa jeshi zaidi ya 23000 wamekufa na maelfu ya wanajeshi wana makovu na wamejeruhiwa. The government said to our chaplains you cannot use the name of Jesus in any meeting. Na hata serikali yetu inasema hauwezi kalitumia tu jina la Yesu bila maana yoyote. What a tragic decision. Ni wamzi wa namna gani mkuu ambao tunapaswa kuufanya jiona leo? Who's going to tell those people that Jesus loves them? Nani anaweza kwenda na kuambia watu hawa kwamba Yesu anawapenda? In Turkey tonight there's 83 million people. Uturuki tuna watu zaidi ya milioni 83,600. There are less than 500 people that are born again in Turkey tonight. Na wapo ni tuna pungufu ya watu pungufu ya laki tano ambao pungufu ya watu mia tano ambao wameokoka wanamwamini Yesu katika nchi yetu. Who's going to do something about that? 
Sasa katika mamilioni ya zaidi ya milioni 83 nani ataenda kuambia hawa watu habari ya Yesu Kristo? In India there's 1.3 billion people tonight. Kule India kuna zaidi ya bilioni moja na milioni 300 na mapointi. They estimate that 500,000 have never one time heard the name of Jesus. Lakini makadilio ya watu zaidi ya eh, 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 eh. laki tano hawajawahi hata kukutana na injili ya Kristo Yesu. A friend of mine told me this story. Rafiki yangu mmoja alini alini aliniambia habari hii. High up in the Andes mountains in South America. Kule juu kabisa katika ile 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 Amerika ya Kusini katika mlima mmoja hapo. A local pastor saw some villages way up there he decided to go to them and and, and minister to them. Mchungaji mmoja akaona vijiji ambavyo vipo kule akaamua kwenda kuahubilia wale watu. There was no record that anyone had ever brought the gospel to those villages. Na hakuna kumbukumbu yoyote ya mtu ambaye aliwahi kuwapelekea wale watu wa kijijini kule habari ya Kristo Yesu. He led a number of those people to the Lord. Na akafanikiwa kuwaleta mamia ya watu wa muamini Yesu kutoka kwenye kile kijiji. And one of the ladies said to him, "We just buried my husband." na mama mmoja miongoni mwa wale akamwambia person that says lord whatever you want with me i'm yours ni yule mtu anayesema bwana lolote unalolitaka kwangu mimi ni wako wherever you send me i'll go popote utakaponituma bwana nitaenda god called us a number of years ago to leave a thriving ministry in baltimore maryland unajua miaka kadhaa iliyopita hapo mungu alituambia tuache huduma eh, ambayo ilikuwa imeanza kustawi katika eneo ambalo walikuwa wanatumika to go to the west coast in a place that we had never been ili tuende pwani maeneo ambayo hatujawahi kwenda kabisa both of our children were in college na watoto wetu miaka hiyo walikuwa wakiwa vioni wanasoma and, and it would require us to leave our children teenagers behind na ili tupasa ili kwenda kutumika eneo hilo tuwaache vijana wetu hawa watoto wetu we were very concerned about that na kwa kweli jambo hilo kwetu lilikuwa limetugusa sana. God spoke to Bonnie and I in the middle of that. Na Mungu alizungumza na mimi na mke wangu usiku fulani. And what he said to me then applies to you as well tonight. Kile ambacho Mungu aliniambia kwangu mimi na mke wangu kinakuhusu hata wewe jioni ya leo. He said if you'll take care of my family, I'll take care of yours. Akaniambia kama wewe utachunga familia yangu mimi nitachunga familia yako You're going to hear the spirits call tonight Unaweza kwenda ukasikia wito wa Roho Mtakatifu jioni leo And you're going to say but I can't leave this behind or that behind Na unaweza ukaanza kusema sasa Bwana inawezekanaje nikaacha jambo lile na lile niende huko nakotaka niende Follow God's call at any cost Nataka nikwambie wewe fata wito wa Mungu kwa gharama yoyote Looking back I'm so thankful that we went na mimi nataka nishukuru kabisa nikikumbuka huko nyuma na shukuru kwamba Mungu tulimtii tukaenda Countless victories came from that decision Na ghafla um, uh, uh, ushindi mkuu ukatokea katika maamuzi yetu Who is that person that God will use Ni nani mtu huyu ambaye Mungu atamtumia He or she will be the person who knows how to prevail in prayer Huyu ni mtu ambaye anaweza kuwa na uwezo wa kudumu katika maombi. If you visit the General Council in Springfield, Missouri, kama ungeweza kuhudhuria mkutano wote kule mkuu kule mizuri, there's a picture of a man named Calvin Olson. Kuna picha ya mtu mmoja anayeitwa Olson. He stood at the border for 30 days and prayed about Albania the nation of Albania. Alisimama kwa siku zaidi ya 30:40 akiliombea taifa hili la Albania. Albania. It was communist at those days and there was no chance for the gospel to be uh, uh, exhibited in the country. Ilikuwa ni kawaida sana kwenye miaka hiyo ni ngumu sana kuipeleka injili katika ile nchi. So he stood at the border for 30 days and prayed and interceded for Albania. Kwa hiyo alisimama kwa siku 30 akiomba kwa ajili ya nchi hii. I can tell you that the Lord honored his prayers. Nataka nikwambie Mungu aliyaheshimu na kuyasikia maombi yake. Priority one, help build a fabulous uh, Bible school there that I've had the privilege to preach at before and it's Marvelous what God does when he opens doors. Huduma hii ya kipaumbele cha kwanza walifanikiwa kujenga chuo cha Biblia pale. Nataka nikwambie 
kazi kubwa ya Mungu inafanyika kule. So we need to learn to say Lord wherever you need me I will go. Kwa unachotakiwa kukisema ni iki kwamba Bwana popote unapotaka niende mimi nitaenda. Who is that person that God will use in this hour? Ni nani mtu huyo ambaye Mungu anataka mtumie katika wakati huu? He will use the person who's a student of the word of God. Atamtumia mtu yoyote ambaye yeye ni mwanafunzi wa neno la Mungu. We must proclaim these principles that are forever settled. Ni lazima tuzitangaze kanuni hizi ambazo tumekwisha kupewa. This book stands anointed and it will set people free. Kitabu hiki ambacho kimevuviwa kitawaweka watu kuwa huru. Be a preacher of the word of God. Mpendwa, muhubiri wa neno la Mungu. Psalm 119:89. Angalia katika kile kitabu cha Zabuli 119. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Milele yote, e Bwana, neno lako lime Imarika duniani. Amen. Amen. Are you still awake? Watu wa Mungu bado tupo macho au tumelala? Who is that person that God will use? Nataka niulize ni mtu gani huyo ambaye Mungu anataka amtumie? He will use the person who has a living message for a dying world. Atamtumia mtu yule aliye na ujumbe ulio hai katika ulimwengu unaokufa. You heard our brother last night proclaim the importance of that kind of preaching. Ulimsikia ndugu yetu jana jioni akizungumza kwa habari ya umuhimu wa kubili injili iliyo hai. Some years ago, uh, many years ago, I, our church conducted a, a local vacation Bible school. Miaka mingi iliyopita kanisa letu lilikuwa limefanya tukio la kutengeneza chuo cha Biblia tu cha mtaani. On the first night a woman came with her four children. Na jioni ya kwanza tu kuna mama moja katujia akiwa na watoto wanne. We gave a simple plan of salvation and an altar call and she responded with her children. Tulimpa tu kanuni chache kwa habari ya wokovu na akawa amekubali akapita mbele tukawa tumempa wokovu. You could see visually there was change in their lives. Na kwa kweli hata kwa kutazama kwa macho tuliona kabisa kuna badiliko limetokea kwenye maisha yao I didn't know anything about her family story Mimi sikuwa najua chochote kwa habari ya historia ya familia yake Several weeks later though this man came to my office Baada ya wiki kadhaa huyu mtu alikuja katika ofisi yangu He looked just like a pirate Alikuwa a pirate Alikuwa anafanana kama rubani He had this kama kama jambazi He had this real narrow waist and huge shoulders alikuwa ni kama mtu mwenye mwili mkubwa mabega yametanuka sana just like brother barnabas alikuwa mnene na mrefu kama 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 kaka yangu hapa barnabas his nose was twisted and he had scars on his face pua yake alipokuwa ananitazama ilikuwa inatikisika na alikuwa na makovu katika uso wake he was the captain of a scallop boat uh, you know what scallops are uh, seafood they would go out and fish for several months and come back. Walikuwa ni watu ambao wangeweza kwenda kwenye maeneo fulani ya uvuvi wakavua kwa miaka kwa muda mrefu na baadaye wangerudi. If fishing was good he could come home with 2 or 300,000 dollars of profit. Kama angepata kuweza kupata uvuvi mzuri alikuwa ana uwezo wa kuja na dola 200 au 300 anarudi nazo nyumbani. So this imposing man comes and stands over me at my desk. Sasa mtu wa namna kama hii akanijia akasimama mbele yangu. What have you done to my family he asked. Akanitazama usoni akasema umefanya nini kwenye familia yangu. And my knees were like this they were shaken. Na kwa sababu alikuwa anatisha tayari miguu yangu ikaanza kutetemeka. I said, "Well, your family came uh, to the church and they all gave their lives to Jesus and and, and it's just wonderful when God answers prayer like that." Nikamwambia, "Unajua kilichotokea wa familia yako walikuja kanisani wakampokea Yesu na ni jambo la pekee pale Mungu anapojibu maombi." He said, "When I came home off this fishing trip, akasema unajua nimetoka nilipoorudi nyumbani kutoka katika eh, shughuli zangu za uvuvi everything was different about my family nikakuta kila kitu pale nyumbani kwangu kipo tofauti they talk different they think different 
wanawaza tofauti wanao. Onekana wapo tofauti. He said I don't know what you did but I'm thankful. Akaniambia japokuwa sijui umefanya nini kwenye familia yangu lakini nataka nikushukuru. As a as a as a new as a young minister um, na, we had financial challenges as you can imagine. Na na sasa mimi kama eh, muhubili mu, mchanga katika huduma nilikuwa napitia matatizo ya kiuchumi nyakati zile. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the biggest wad of 100 dollar bills I've ever seen. Na akaingiza mkono wake katika mfuko akatoa kitita cha ma, ma elfu ya hela ambao mimi sikuwa nimewahi kuyaona. He said I don't know how to thank you but I'm going to try. Akasema sijui namna gani nikushukuru lakini ngoja nijaribu. And he started flipping 100 dollar bills on my desk. Na akaanza kuweka dola 100 100 pale katika dawati langu. I said, keep going Lord, keep going. Na nikaanza kurukaluka nikasema endelea Bwana, endelea Bwana. I'm just here to tell you that God can meet your needs and provide all you need in ministry. Nataka nikwambie Mungu anaweza akakutana na mahitaji yako na akakupa kile unachokihitaji kwenye huduma yako. Jesus is waiting to bring life to your town and towns that have never been reached. Mungu anataka upeleke uhai kwenye miji yako na miji yote ambayo haijafikiwa. I read the story about the pastor who was um, being pressured by his district superintendent. Nilisoma habari ya mchungaji ambaye alikuwa ni kama anapitia hali fulani ya kukandamizwa na masuala fulani kutoka kwa askofu wake wa jimbo. There's been only one convert in the whole year. Only one convert. Kwa sababu huyu alikuwa na muongofu mmoja tu katika miaka mingi. So the pastor was under duress and he was praying when the young boy came up to him one day. Siku moja mchungaji huyu akatekiwa naomba ndio kijana mmoja mdogo akamjia. He said pastor do you think that I could one day be a pastor or a missionary? Akamuliza mchungaji hivi unafikiri inaweza katokea siku moja na mimi nikaja kuwa mchungaji au missionary? The pastor said you just pray and God will show you what to do. Mchungaji akamwambia wewe yaomba tu lakini Mungu atakuonyesha nini unatakiwa kufanya. That little boy was Robert Moffat. Robert Moffat. Ha uyu kijana mdogo alikuwa anaitwa Robert Moffat. In 1816 he came to the continent of Africa to preach the gospel. Katika ule mwaka wa 1800 Some years later in 26 mwaka 1816 baada ya miaka kadhaa He was in the pulpit in a London church. Siku moja akiwa katika madhabahu akihubili katika kanisa. And this is what he said. Haya ndio maneno aliyasema kijana huyo. I have seen in the morning sun the smoke of a thousand villages where no missionary has ever been. Akasema nimeona asubuhi wakati wa jua na wakati wa ukungu katika vijiji ambavyo sijawahi kuona muhubiri yoyote wa missionary ambaye amewahi kufika maeneo hayo na kuhubiri. There was a young doctor in the church he was very moved by what he heard. Na kulikuwa na daktari mmoja pale kanisani akawa ameguswa sana na kile kitu ambacho mhubili huyu amesema. And he came to Africa. Na akaamua kuja Africa. His name was David Livingstone. Jina lake alikuwa anaitwa David Livingstone. You never know who you're reaching. Unajua uwezi ukajua ni mtu gani huyo ambaye umemfikia. The highest calling in the world is to bring people to the light of the gospel and to the presence of Jesus. Wito wetu mkubwa sana katika ulimwengu ni kuwafikia watu na kuwaleta watu katika nuru ya Kristo Yesu. Who is that person that God will use? Nani mtu huyo ambaye Mungu anataka amtumie? He'll be that person that expects results from the gospel. Ni mtu ambaye anategemea matokeo makubwa kutoka kwenye injili. Last Sunday I preached in the pulpit of Calvary Assembly of God in Hampton, Virginia. Wiki iliyopita nilihubili katika madhabahu ya kanisa la Calvary kule Virginia. When I finished a man about this tall came up to me and spoke to me. Spoke to me. Nilipomaliza tu jumbe wangu akatokea mtu mmoja ambaye hakuwa mrefu sana katika kimo akanijia na kuzungumza na mimi. He said I was the witch doctor that controlled all of Vietnam. Akasema mimi nilikuwa ni 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 daktari tajili ni 
ni mganga wa kienyeji tajili au mchawi niliyekuwa nina eh, ninatawala Vietnam yote and a man full of the holy spirit in the assemblies of god came and started preaching in our town na mtu mmoja aliyekuwa amejawa na roho mtakatifu kutoka assemblies of god alikuja na akawa anahubiri katika mji wetu he said i came there to interrupt that meeting akasema mimi kiukweli nilienda pale kuvuruga tu mkutano wao but when i tried to interrupt it lakini nipo jaribu kuvuruga ule mkutano i was knocked flat on my back by something that i never felt before nikawa nime pigwa na kitu ambacho sijawahi kukihisi au kukisikia huko nyuma and i gave my life to jesus na ndipo nikaamua kumpa yesu maisha yangu i no longer a witch doctor i'm a preacher of the gospel he said tangia hapo mimi sio mchawi au mganga wa kienyeji ni muhubiri wa injili ndicho alichoniambia there are places that you will go to where powerful things are getting ready to happen kuna maeneo ambayo utaenda na mambo makubwa yatatokea I wish I had more time but I want to conclude with this simple truth. Natamani ningekuwa na muda zaidi lakini natamani niitimishe kwa kweli hii laisi sana. In Acts chapter 13. Ukiangalia kile kitabu cha Matendo sura ya 13. Now notice this. Verse 1 and 2. Matendo sura ya 13 mstari ule wa kwanza na wa pili. The church was there ministering to the Lord. Kanisa lilikuwepo pale likitoa huduma mbele za Bwana. Says as they worship the Lord. Na wanasema na walipokuwa wakiendelea kumwabudu Bwana. And fasted na kufunga. In that atmosphere the Holy Spirit spoke. Katika mazingira hayo Roho Mtakatifu alishuka na kusema. Just like he's doing tonight. Kama anavyofanya jioni hii ya leo. Set apart for me akasema nitengeeni Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Sauli na Barnaba kwa kazi niliyowaitia. There's a moment in every season. Kuna wakati katika kila majila where the seed of a person's life must be planted into the heart of God. Lazima kwamba roho mbegu ya mtu ipandwe kwenye moyo wa Mungu. Are you ready and willing to go as he calls you? Nikuulize upo tayari kwenda popote ambapo anataka wewe uende When Philip the, the evangelist went down to Samaria and preached Jesus the Bible says there was great joy in that city Muinjilisti Filipo alipoenda Samaria kuhubiri injili Biblia inasema mji ule ukajawa na furaha kuu Seasons of refreshing are waiting for people Nataka niwaambieni nyakati za kuburudishwa zinawasubiria zina watu hao. How many of you want God to use you in these hours? Wangapi wenu jiona leo mnatamani Mungu awatumie katika majila haya? Amen. Let's, Amen. Let's stand to our feet please. Emsimama kwa miguu yako hapo tafadhali. The musicians are here. I want to sing a song. I'll go where you want me to go. Waimbaji wetu wapo hapa natamani waimbe jioni ya leo ule wimbo unaosema nitaenda popote unapotaka mimi niende now in a moment you're going to have opportunity to respond na ninataka nikupe sasa muda mfupi baada ya hapa kuitikia kile ambacho we're mungu, believing, wa, mungu, we're, mungu amesema na wewe we're believing god for 200 people tunamwamini mungu kwamba usiku au jiona leo mungu atatupa watu zaidi ya 200 200 couples wanandoa mia, zaidi ya 200 that would respond to the call of the spirit ambao wataitikia ule wito wa roho mtakatifu speak our lord speak by your spirit bwana sema mwenyewe sema kwa roho wako and we will listen and do what you say na sisi tutasikia na kufanya kile unachotaka tufanye okay let's sing that and Naomba, while, the, while they're singing naomba tuimbe wimbo huo na wakati wanaendelea kuimba wimbo huo Those of you who feel the spirit calling and you are willing you don't need to know all the details yet na watu wote ambao unasikia sasa uwito wa roho mtakatifu 
anakuita hata kama bado hujafahamu mambo kwa, kwa undani wake we're going to invite you to come to these altars nitakualika upite hapa mbele madhabauni by your coming you say i'm willing for the lord to use me wherever he wants to send me wakati unakuja utakuwa ukisema moyoni mwako bwana nipo tayari kukutumikia popote unaponituma niende i am ready nipo tayari I'm going to do what he asks of me. Nitaenda kufanya chochote unachotaka nifanye. I will answer when he calls. Wakati tunaendelea kuimba wimbo huu. I will answer. Tumepewa nafasi ya kupita hapa mbele. Kama unasikia wito Mungu amesema na wewe. Holy Spirit come. Come. Unapita hapa mbele. Roho Bwana, tujilie jioni hii ya leo. Akini ta taiti ka akini whatever he wants whatever he wants of me chochote unachokitaka bwana i present myself as an offering ninajitoa mbele zako bwana kama sadaka i give myself for his plan najiweka nafsi yangu kwa mipango yake nitafanya Let's go before the Lord and pray. Twende mbele za Bwana tumuombe Mungu sasa wote. Let's go before the Lord and let's all pray. Hebu tuombe kwa ajili ya wamishonari hawa zaidi ya 200. Let's pray for these 200 and more missionaries. Hebu tuombe kwa nchi hizi. Let's pray for these nations. Tuombe kwa ajili ya makanisa haya 300. Let's pray for the 300 churches. Hebu tuombe kwa ajili ya wamishonari hawa ambao Mungu amewaita. Let's pray for the missionaries whom God has called. Hebu tuombe kwa ajili ya nchi hizi 300. Makanisa haya 300 yanatakiwa kupandwa. 300 churches which should be planted. Oh one. Holy Father, faithful God. We thank you because you are the one who calls people. Thank you because we have called your people. To go forth and plant 300 churches. I commit them into your hands. Give them enough grace. The decision that they have made should continue O oh Lord I trust you for 300 churches I am believing you for the rich in all the nations I pray for your grace that it will cover them it will protect them it will keep them they and their families in the name of Jesus
Ninyi wote ambao mmekuja hapa mbele all of you who have come forward kuitikia wito wa umishonari to respond to the call of missions naomba kitoka hapa umeona askofu wako wa jimbo i would ask you once you leave this conference please see your district superintendent jitambulishe kwake introduce yourself to him yeye atakupeleka idara ya umishonari he will then take you to the department of missions lakini pia ongea piga simu makao makuu ya idara ya umishonari but also give a call to the headquarters of the department of missions na ongea nia yako na shauku yako ya kuwa missionary and speak to the people concerned about your desire uh, to be a missionary tunazo nchi nane we have eight countries ambazo tunataka wa missionary waende haraka in which we would like to send missionaries as quickly as possible Mungu akubariki sana kwa kuitikia wito huu. May God bless you richly for answering this call. Hebu tumshukuru Bwana kwa ajili ya ndugu zetu hapa. Let's thank the Lord for this group of brothers and sisters who are here. Asante sana Bwana awabariki. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Umeshonari una mambo makubwa matatu. Uh, being a missionary involves three main things. Kwanza kuna kazi ya kwenda. There is first of all the task of going. Na pili kuna kazi ya kuomba. And secondly there is the task of